Am I the butthole for telling my cousin at least I know my parents wanted me when she kept making comments about me not being family? Some backstory I, female 17, was adopted when I was 3 months old. My cousin, 17 female, is my grandparents only bio grandchild but she seems to be the only one that cares about that. She doesn't like me because I got a full scholarship to a performing arts school and she didn't get accepted and when my grandpa gave us his cars, I got the better one. We had a family dinner last week and my grandparents asked about my BF. My grandma jokingly asked when we're getting married because she wants a great grandchild. I laughed and said it'll be a while and my cousin cut in and said, they probably want a real great grandchild anyway. I brushed it off and kept talking to my grandma. When we were about to have dessert my grandpa realized he forgot to get ice cream asked me to drive into town and buy some. My cousin made another comment about how she's the only real family member so she should have gotten the good car. My grandpa told her to shut up and that I got the new car because I help them out and come to visit them almost every day and she doesn't. After dessert, my grandpa said we should take my sister, 14, to the backyard and teach her how to drive the golf cart. I agreed and told her I was driving that thing into town to run errands all the time when I was her age. My grandpa then told her maybe if she likes driving it he'll give it to her. My cousin lost it. She started screeching that it's not fair that we get everything and we're not even their real family. That pissed me off because she said it in front of my youngest sister, 4, made her cry so I snapped at her, and said, at least we know our family wanted us. Cousin screamed and stormed off and my sisters got more ice cream. My grandparents think that was hilarious and I was totally in the right. My dad also thinks I'm in the right but my mom thinks that was mean and I should apologize so I wanted to know if I was the butthole. Not the butthole. How long can she continue to be disrespectful before someone snapped at her? She got what she deserved and it wasn't as you were overly mean to her. She honestly just sounds spoiled rotten. Just like Joker said, you get what you effing deserve. Childhood is idolizing Batman. Adulthood is realizing the Joker may have a point. Sociopathy is relating with the womanizing psychopathic murderer slash crime lord. And idiocy is writing off an entire topic as evil without taking any time to understand it. It has nothing to do with relating to the Joker, it's the philosophical opposition between Batman and Joker. OMG yes. This is the perfect way to explain it. Thank you. The Joker's philosophy mostly revolves around getting people to hurt and kill each other, throughout his entire run as a character. Just because you saw, one movie where he kills a few rich guys doesn't make an edgelord in clown makeup a role model. One movie? Mate. Have you seen The Dark Knight? And this is just touching on the live-action films. Is your image of Joker derived entirely from the Keaton era? West era? Because the Joker of today is a far cry from just getting people to hurt and kill each other. Now I want to make it clear that I do not mean he should be a role model. I actually agree with the commenter above who compares it to sociopathy. Because the actions of Joker are absolutely devoid of empathy or emotion, and to emulate those actions would require the same lack of empathy. However, that doesn't mean that we cannot have a discussion on the deeper philosophical questions he addresses. And it does not mean we cannot find a little bit of truth in his answers, even when we would not agree with his actions. This is how Joker is a foil to Batman, and this is the line their story always follows. And it's the story you missed if you really think Joker boils down to just a big bully in clown makeup. He's literally a terrorist in the dark night. If he was Arab, I guarantee no one would agree with what he says. There's a reason incels worship him. Terrorists have a point about America effing over the Middle East but that doesn't mean I find a little bit of truth in their rhetoric, because they are terrorists. That whole movie was about the Patriot Act, and framed the Joker as a sort of Bin Laden figure. Terrorists have a point but I won't find a little bit of truth in it. But you literally just did, you just said they have a point. You just said exactly what I was talking about. That Joker is a horrible person who does horrible things. And we should not applaud or aspire to those things. But, sometimes, he has a point that resonates with us. Such as the eat the rich mentality of 2019 Joker, or the agent of chaos slash anarchy of Dark Knight. Which yes can be taken as a commentary on the Patriot Act. And yes, Joker played the role of the terrorist. But he showed the length that Batman was willing to go in order to keep the city safe, and how Batman's methods weren't working. 
He showed that Batman is also a villain in this story, infringing on the rights of Gotham's people to fuel his need for the justice he believes is right. There's a great case to be made that Joker was the one to actually clean the streets, seeing as he wiped out crime syndicates, got rid of corrupt officials, and forced the city's rampant vigilante into hiding. When Dark Knight Rises starts, Gotham has seen eight years of relative peace, thanks to the events of the Dark Knight. Do you see what I mean about the character being complicated? It's never a cut and dry he's a psycho, unless you're watching Suicide Squad lol. Thank you, this actually changed my mind a bit. Have you seen The Dark Knight? Because the Joker of today is a far cry from just getting people to hurt and kill each other. This is the film you're talking about, right? Web link. Personally, I consider the killing joke to be the definitive Joker. Such a Joker cannot have any substantial philosophy because philosophy is rooted in sanity and Joker explicitly advocates for insanity. Who said anything about role models? They're talking about the Joker's philosophy, literally just murder and mayhem, like he's Confucius or something. Nerd. Why did this make me laugh? Gosh damn your response must have burned. Comeuppance is a word that needs to get back into circulation. It makes me wonder if these are things her parents say to her in private. Yeah clearly, the cousin is going through a bunch of crap. I pity her honestly. Yeah. From a 17 year old, that reads like self-esteem issues. On top of dealing with being left by her parents. This is exactly what I was thinking. Yes. Most times jealousy is organic but this sounds like they may talk about it in the house. Maybe even compare them to each other, therefore the cousin is taking it out on original poster. No doubt. Not the butthole. The parents and grandparents failed her and did nothing to correct her downright disrespectful behavior, so original poster had to. She really needed to learn, don't dish out what you can't take in return. In middle school, I heard two upperclassmen bickering. The school was 8 to 12 grades. It was getting heated, and one girl made a jab at the fact that the other girl was adopted. Her response, my parents chose me. Your parents got stuck with you. This she's a meanie and also way too old to be behaving like this. It sounds like your grandparents and dad have your back. Maybe have a talk with your mom and let her know how damaging and demoralizing it can be to hear the crap your cousin spouts, and you're protecting your sisters and wish your mom would support you. Not the butthole. The cousin's parents have to be enforcing and enabling this entitled behavior. The grandparents are clearly just over it and genuinely enjoy their adoptive grandchild more. Who cares about being related in DNA only? Unfortunately a lot of people do. That's why IVF is so common and adoption is so rare, especially for older children and children of color. I personally only know of one couple who didn't immediately opt for IVF when they were unable to conceive naturally and only went that route because they tried extremely hard to adopt but couldn't. Overseas adoption was too expensive and the husband was barred from adopting due to a very minor weed charge from more than a decade ago so she would have had to divorce him to get approved, ridiculous right? Everyone else I know of only cared about having their own baby. One cousin by marriage who was warned against having biological children by her doctor due to a severe genetic disorder, flat out told me that she didn't want some brat thrown away by a crack whore. Yeah. Sadly that is the mentality many many people have. But it turns out her doctor was right. All three of her kids have the same genetic condition and the youngest child is so bad off that they don't think she'll make it through her teens. Granted, the entire system needs a major overhaul. Adoption needs to be cheaper and easier. And while foster to adopt is both there are issues there as well, like parents being able to demand the children back despite a history of horrible abuse. I also have a huge problem with health insurance and the government funding IVF. If you can't afford it on your own, you probably can't afford to raise a child. That money would be far better off funding adoption. Private adoption agencies need to go as well as they are well known for horrendous discrimination. But people have to do better as well. Sorry for the rant, I'm just really passionate about this. Children aren't a commodity though, there's a reason why international adoptions and local adoptions have slowed and it's more than just biological preferencing. The act of adoption is complex, ethically challenging, financially draining and you know, 
They've got to have babies and children to adopt and there's a large group of people that aren't equipped for foster to adoption that exists in the first world. The government certainly won't fund IVF for normal people without fertility issues. They might fund sperm slash egg preservation for cancer patients about to lose their fertility from treatment. Also, the process of adoption is incredibly difficult. Countries like Yemen won't even let people adopt their children, even if they are starving to death. Also, the chance of adoption really drops off for parents over 40 years old. It's really discriminatory because many people only start to feel financially secure after age 40 these days, also the adoption agencies charge exorbitant fees. So I agree that while some people only want biological children, a lot of people do want to adopt but are shut out one way or another. If adoption were easier, I imagine many people would do it. Adoption needs to be cheaper and easier. But isn't it risky? Since, you know, if adoption was made easier, someone can just adopt a child and sell their organs for money. I hope you're joking but if not rest assured that there are routine wellness checks done on adoptive families either by the agency or the government. Adoption needs to be cheaper and easier. Spot on. Your whole last paragraph is. I think a lot of her mindset also could come from aunt slash uncle saying little snippy things in front of here slash to her while, they were all growing up, behind closed doors. Not saying cousin is without guilt, definitely not. But if she's been doing this for a long time, then this doesn't just come out of nowhere. You know? I mean if the grandparents are sick of it to the point of blowing her off. Yikes, grimacing face. Not the butthole with a small serve of no buttholes here chances are she learned this behavior from her parent s. While 17 is certainly old enough to form their own opinions, it sounds like original poster and her siblings are raised as real family members and their family don't make a big deal of them being adopted. The most likely thing is the cousin's parent who is related to the grandparents feels like their role of providing real grandkids has been not sufficiently recognized and celebrated and complains about it when out of their parents' earshot. The cousin needs therapy to get over the jealousy, it's only going to do them harm as they go through life, blaming others for any lack of achievement. Yes, you were baited, but kids have no say in whether they are born or adopted or how they're raised. So I wouldn't revisit that as an insult. It sounds like she's pretty insecure about her place in the family already. Not the butthole. And good on you original poster. No one has the right to make you feel like you're not part of that family. Your grandparents and parents sound like amazing people. Except her mom at the moment. Hmm, have to respectfully disagree there. With the facts I have here, the mom was perfectly entitled to make the comment provided that, A, it was done in private, i.e. not a public naming and shaming, and B, it was said respectfully. Up. Please correct my assumptions above if either weren't true or you felt attacked in any way. I guess I read into it too much. I'm cool with the mom saying apologize just because it was mean. If the mom is cool with cousin's behavior though, then I'm not cool with the mom. Agreed on that. If the behavior is condoned that would be abominable. But user can't eat cats Kevin, that was a great discussion. I really love it when I can present a differing opinion that gets discussed civilly. You are awesome, cool face. Reddit link. I also love when internet people can change their opinion slash perspective. Excellent interaction my good person. Wow, you guys are wholesome, heart. And what's the deal with cousin's parents? Have they never tried to reel in her jealousy issues? I wonder if cousin's parents are fueling it. Maybe they talk about how their daughter should have gotten the better things from grandparents because she's their blood. I don't know the situation, but I wouldn't doubt that cousin heard this from her parents. Absolutely not the butthole. I have adopted cousins on two different sides of my family. I'm closer to one of these cousins' kids than any of my blood-related ones. I'd fight anyone that said they weren't my family. On the other hand, those beliefs don't come out of nowhere. She's certainly old enough to know and act better but I'm assuming one of her parents ingrained these poisonous beliefs in her. Not the butthole. Good job for defending your family. Your mom is right, it was mean. It was also justified in the appropriate response to someone who was being deliberately provocative and cruel. Your mom may be like my grandmother, a peacekeeper through and through. Peacekeepers like this can be wonderful to have in families, 
but they can also rug sweep for the sake of peace, which isn't okay. That said, it sounds like your cousin actually has more of a beef with your grandparents than with you. She's taking it out on you, but it sounds like she resents the strained relationship she has with them and it hurts her to be pushed aside. She may have no one to blame but herself, but that doesn't mean it doesn't hurt her. Honestly, what original poster said wasn't even that mean, it was just true. If you adopt a kid you can be 100%, sure the adoption wasn't an accident. Sure, I guess it implies something unkind about the cousin but like, who cares? Not the butthole. I mean, original poster definitely said it intending it to hurt. I still think she's in the right, but well, it's technically true doesn't mean it was an innocuous statement of fact with no intended consequences. She snapped, understandably, and she wanted it to sting. True. I tried to say that in my comment, I guess it didn't come across. Wakes up with a hangover what the hell did I do last night? Good morning, mommy. Ah, dollar hit, I drunk adopted a kid, again. There's a thing popular in adoption circles that starts out with honey, sit down, I have some news, and goes through the agency said we're five documents along and but how? It was just that one time and we didn't even use pen. Edit, ah, uh, here it is. Honey, sit down. I have some news for you. What is it? Well, I don't know how to say this, so I'll just come out with it. I went out to the mailbox today and... Well, we got an I-171H. A what? An I-171H? As in, we're going to have... Another baby? It looks that way. But how? We've been so careful. I put away all the blank 1600A forms. Didn't you hide our home study update? Of course I did. But don't forget, there was that one. Night, what night? Pauses, oh, that night. But it was only once. We were just messing around. I didn't print clearly. I didn't even use black ink. Pauses again, but it was kind of fun. Giggles, it was, wasn't it? I'll never forget how. Cute you looked getting your fingerprints. So now, we've got our I-171H, eh? But that doesn't always mean you'll adopt, does it? I mean, shouldn't you see the agency or something, make sure everything's okay? I already did. And... I'm five documents along. Five documents. And they're all notarized, certified, and authenticated, okay? Just great. There was one small scare when the agency couldn't see the notary's middle initial but it showed up just fine under the magnifying glass. Thank God. And you honey? Are you feeling okay? I'm feeling fine. As long as I know, you're happy about this. Happy? I'm thrilled. It's always a shock at first when something like this happens, but of course, I'm happy. Is it? It is too late to shred it? Onk. I just sprayed coffee out my nose. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to be the first to know about Red Rabbit Reader's new videos. If you like our videos, please like them on YouTube and share them with your friends. We welcome your comments below. Press to start another of our videos.